Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 13 of Be With Me. We're in the book of Romans. Yesterday, we honored the question, is God unrighteous? And that is, is he, people were asking the question, is God just in his wrath? Now, the irony with that question is if you're one of a person who asks the question, that means you're human. We're going to find out later you're 100% accountable and that 100, you're 100% unrighteous yourself and you're in the need of grace. So the bad news is you're under the wrath of God. Now, that's kind of the bad news for you. The good news is you're living in this gap where there's this gap between sin and and wrath. We don't see the wrath just yet. We see the patience of God. We see his forbearance and we see his kindness. So we uh, we all have an opportunity to, number one, recognize that he's just in his justice and that we're under this spotlight. And, and today we're going to ask, well, who's accountable? I've never seen a, a section of scripture where it says the same thing 12 different ways, and I'm literally it's 12 different ways, which basically says, I'll summarize for you here, that 100% of people are accountable before God. Here we go. This is from uh, Romans chapter 3. I'm going to start in verse 9. What then? Are Jews better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, and he's going to quote, uh, I think it's nine different Old Testament scriptures here, all crammed together. Here are the, some of the quotes. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have s- turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Then he describes them. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And then verse 19 and 20, the conclusion for today. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So today's title is a stop sign on my mouth, because I think it's the best image after he goes through this litany time and time again of 100% of people being accountable. Then how should we respond? Well, we should all put a stop sign over our mouth and this vile tongue that we have should be stopped because we realize like, oh my goodness, I'm the one that's in trouble. I'm the one that's accountable uh, before God. So the irony is, is that if you're considering this question, the question of, hey, is God just? Is he just to, to open this can of wrath? If you're considering that question, then you're the one that has the opportunity and the reason being is he says this 12 different times is not one of us is uh, is righteous before a holy God. So we should, at the end of today, put our hand over our mouth, uh, put a stop sign over our mouth and say, oh, I might be the one that's in trouble. It's me that could be in judgment. It's me that is in judgment. And as I am judged, I am found, am found wanting. So kind of a good conclusion today is, oh, no, this means me. And if you're a person who's had some spiritual leisure, if you will, to make an accusation against God that he's not a, that he's not good for his wrath, then you also have the leisure in this, this gap, this patience of God, to consider that this is a just God, that he is right in his judgments. And when he considers yourself as a recipient of God's judgment, He is righteous in doing so. And this should lead us to every mouth being stopped and the whole world, every individual held accountable. And in in a sense, as we stand here today, at least, unjustifiable in our own resources. So when we ask the question, hey, what will you do about your sin? What can you do about your sin? All of us pull, you know, see what's in our pockets and we turn our pockets inside out and we got nothing. So what will you do about your sin? What can you do? What do you have in your pockets? What abilities and resources do you have to bring to bear 
uh, against your sin and against the judgment that is upon yourself? The answer is nothing, nobody, no how. So every person has has enough knowledge. Nobody can claim ignorance. Remember, he first threw the, the, the Gentiles under the bus saying, hey, creation condemns you because you should know enough about creation to know enough about God to respond appropriately about God. That's the Jew, the the Gentile, and then the Jew. Even worse, you guys have the the the, the law, and the, it says here that the law gives knowledge. It's been a tutor for you. So, if the Bible stopped right here conceptually, one hundred percent of people would be in, under condemnation. There would be no fix. There would be uh, universal guilt. There would be uh, grief. Because everybody would be held accountable for the sin, and appropriate anger of God and punishment of God would be, that is his wrath, would be foisted upon humanity. We would all be standing here with stop signs over our mouth. So in conclusion, if you're asking the question, is God right to judge? Well, then you also have the leisure, the spiritual leader, leisure to consider his punishment, to consider his wrath, and you have an opportunity to call your sin sinful. So I don't want you to agree with God today about his good news. The good news is coming tomorrow, by the way. I do want you to agree with God about the bad news, because that's what today is about, that all are, account- are, all are accountable, the Jew and the Gentile. Everybody is condemned. The justice of God has fallen on us all. The wrath of God has fallen on us all. His righteous judgment has fallen on us all. And we all stand here in our leisure of the spiritual gap in the patience of God, standing here with a stop sign over our mouth. So the good news, which is going to start tomorrow, starts in a bucket of wrath, and it's kind of devastating. Now, I'm going to give you one word that starts tomorrow. So as we stand here in our bucket of wrath, the next word in Scripture, after him telling us 12 different times that none of us is righteous in and of ourselves, the next word in Scripture, the first word in verse 21 from Romans chapter 3 is, But we'll get there tomorrow. But today we stand here with a stop sign over our mouth.